Hey everybody, welcome back to the photo lab. Well, I've done a number of videos about the 150 to 600 from Sigma. Every video I talked about the 70D that I had hooked up to this lens. Had a lot of people contact me privately on YouTube or in classes that I teach asking me why I don't use this lens with the 5D Mark IV body. So many people asked me, got me curious, so I decided a little while ago that I was going to take the 70D off of this lens and put the 5D Mark IV on it. So this is my thoughts on the changeover from the 70D to shooting with the 5D Mark IV. Now, this may be a longer video, so I'm going to go really quick. And a couple things I'm going to mention in this video, I think I'm going to have to expand in its own private video to make it more understandable. So bear with me. So my first thoughts, switching from the 70D to the 5D Mark IV. And I knew this would be the first thing that I noticed is because the 70D is a crop sensor and the 5D Mark IV isn't, I went from having a 960 millimeter lens down to having a 600 millimeter lens. So I don't have as much zoom with the 5D Mark IV. Yes, I could get a teleconverter, which is a device that goes between the camera body and the lens that would take it up from, a, if I was a 1.4 teleconverter, would take it up to 840 millimeters. May try that. If I can find one cheap, I may grab one just, just to give it a shot. But I did notice I lost some of that zoom. The difference and the change or whatever from it. Because this has more megapixels in the 5D Mark IV, I could do more cropping and post-production to get closer to my subjects to make it look more what the 70D would look like. So, difference? Yes. Work around? Yes. The big difference is, if I had a 90D which had more megapixels than the 70D had, and I put that up against the 5D Mark IV, I would probably be harder pressed to notice the benefits of the 5D Mark IV and having to do that cropping in post because with the 90D I'd have more megapixels. I could even do more cropping on the 90D. I could even get closer if I wanted to. So yeah, a big gray area, but honestly, between the 70D and the 5D Mark IV, as far as the zoom range, six of one, half a dozen of the other. So let's get into some real world tests. Well, in order to test things out and actually sit down and make sure that I was doing comparable to comparable. I took the settings from my Canon 70D, put them in this camera and programmed them into the custom function setting on this camera. Now, that'll be a future video talking about the custom settings on this camera or the custom functions on this camera. So I put it into custom function one and I went out and I took some pictures using all the same settings that I had on the 70D. Came back, loaded them on the computer, looked at the pictures, decided to make two changes. So two changes I made was the way I shoot this lens is I shoot it on aperture priority, leaving the aperture at F9 and I let the camera choose the appropriate ISO and the appropriate shutter speed. And then I go out and take pictures. With the auto ISO, I was able to increase the range on the 5D Mark IV over what I was doing on the 70D. And the quality on the higher ISO on this camera is as good as the lower ISO on the 70D. So benefit for the 5D Mark IV. But again, if it was the 90D, which is a newer camera than the 70D, I don't know if I would notice that same difference again. So again, between the 90D and the 5D Mark IV, six of one, half a dozen of the other. So then I set it up so that I would go with the higher ISO range and I would use the 5D Mark IV's auto focus, auto select capabilities. So when it sees something, it would focus on it. So I set it up, put that into custom function two, and I went out and took some pictures came back, looked at my pictures. Now, what did I see about having the camera select my autofocus points? I hated it. It was nowhere near as good as me selecting my own autofocus point. It worked great for birds in flight. It worked wonderful for that. 
it worked okay for pictures of like deer or porcupines as long as they were moving a little bit as long as the camera recognized them otherwise just did not work as well as a single focus point do i think that's the problem with the camera no i'm not blaming the 5d mark IV. that's a problem of changing to a different way of taking pictures the biggest issue that i notice and this is a big one is relying more on the camera to select the autofocus points and to do all the thinking for you is a killer and i see so often people falling down that rabbit hole and they never come back the other day i was out shooting i was taking some pictures somebody walked past me i saw what they were going to take a picture of and i was shooting my subject i looked over and went oh that's a beautiful shot i couldn't get a clear shot because they were in the perfect position for it and i didn't want to come and stand next to them so i just sort of watched them it took them just about five minutes to take their camera out of the bag and then adjust all the settings to take a picture and by the time they took their picture the subject was gone and the lighting had changed so when you get all the functions and features and abilities of these cameras and you're playing a video game every time you take a picture they're not helping us they're really not we need to have in our brains how to take a picture and have the cameras help us not relying on the cameras to take the pictures and then us just doing a little post-production editing or doing this or that or whatever is there a difference there's a huge difference between autofocus multi-point and autofocus single point i love single point loved it for weddings loved it for families loved it loved it loved it will i use the autofocus multi-point in this camera i probably will for birds in flight but that's probably about it because everything else i've shot with it i just don't get the number of keepers that i do with a single focus point so big difference the iso difference did i notice a difference in iso this one was able to shoot a little bit faster and a bit lower light conditions wasn't a huge difference <laughs> night and day not close um overall what did i think overall comparing the 70d to this camera on an apple to apple basis i'm into apples today on an apple to apple basis i would say this camera is a slightly better for some of the things that it can potentially do but overall quality if you have a 60d 70d 80d 90d i would say that you're not needing to switch to this body or even to a mirrorless body if you want to take great pictures now side note and a final point in closing i may may try a mirrorless camera with this lens i may people have been asking me people have been asking me people have been asking me but honestly every time somebody mentions to me what the benefits are of going with a mirrorless camera over the 5d mark IV, all those benefits are just fluff to me yeah they're different yes there's you can do different things but really the pictures aren't going to change that much yes it has a bird in flight mode that it'll track a bird and so on and so forth i find this camera really good for that I, i've never had an issue with my 70d will i try it i may try it in the future just to see but as it stands today i really don't need to one of the big differences that i am considering is what i carry when i go on location because of my health because carrying all the heavy camera bags it can really wear you down i am considering leaving the 70ds at the studio as only studio cameras and then taking my 5d mark IVs as only my location cameras there's some benefits to it there's some drawbacks to it um i'm still working that out but i'll talk about that in another video as well another thing that i did and that i'll also talk about is if you watch many of my videos you know i say shoot in jpeg well because i have the dual card slots on the 5d mark IV, i've decided to do a little bit of playing around with raw versus jpeg and i'm doing a video about that in the future as well um, one thing that i will note and this is not even for discussion in my book the 5d mark IV having the two card slots if you're doing anything that is that you're doing for uh, business 
that you're doing to sell, um, that you're doing under contract or anything, having dual cards is definitely the way to go. Um, that's a big difference between the 70D, the 80D, and 90D. Dual cards where you have, if one card happens to pack it in, you have another card. There is no different. There is no, like, no argument whatsoever on it. Um, you, you cannot say that this camera in any way is the same as a 70D. The two, two cards are just so much nicer. Um, if you do weddings, get a camera with two card slots and save to both cards. Um, it'll just save you so many headaches and so many worries. Other than that, it was fun to do. I'm going to continue playing with it. I'll report back in the future if there's anything big that I notice while I'm out shooting. But until then, get out there and take some pictures with the camera you have, with the lens that you have, and enjoy photography. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.